All right, everybody, welcome back. You may remember, you know, back when this vehicle first came out, you know, that had a terrible, terrible time with ripping, and so many reviewers were saying that this thing would be so, so great if only its wings didn't fall off. Well, Gaijin hasn't directly changed anything about the F40, but they did, about a month ago or so, go ahead and change something when it came to your wing strength. But before we get to that, what if I told you you could earn free Golden Eagles for that next vehicle stock grinder event? That's right. Free Golden Eagles for War Thunder can help. Using the app, you can earn Golden Eagles for easy tasks such as surveys or games or even just inviting your friends. Use my referral code 7KVGK to get an extra free 10 Golden Eagles from the start. So what are you waiting for? Download the app in the description below and start earning Golden Eagles today. The F4D from its introduction always had a lot going for it, but it was just held back by the simple fact that, well, if your wings like to seemingly randomly detach themselves, you can't really have a good gameplay experience with that, and you also can't really rely on it to d perform well overall. Well, Gaijin recently went ahead and fixed that, not just this plane, I think I made a video talking about this previously, but if you don't remember, what they did is they changed how ripping works. Previously, the way it worked was if you somehow exceeded your Gs for a split second, you would immediately rip. And this meant a lot of planes like the A4s, for example, the F4D, and the F8, you had to be kind of babied. This also meant they were very much in the minority because the vast majority of planes you can throw around, and if you don't do anything exceptionally, well, violent, then it wouldn't rip. Now, of course, the vast majority of jets you are able to rip if you try hard enough, but it actually takes, you know, trying or doing something stupid for most of them. In the case of the F4D, a lot of the time you could just twitch your mouse or accidentally neg G a little bit and all of a sudden your wing is attached and you have lost the game. Now Gaijin has changed it so with all planes, it takes a couple seconds of actually pulling before it goes ahead and rips. So you can still rip, don't get me wrong, it is possible to rip, but I have not ripped the F4D once playing it because typically what would kill you is when you exceed that max G for just a split second. And so now that it doesn't kill you anymore, you have to actually sustain it. And the F4D for the most part doesn't seem to be really capable of that. This change basically gave you insurance to get those small misinputs that previously would have cost you the game. And so that means that now all the strengths of the F4D are able to shine through. And the biggest of which is its engine power. For its battle rating, this is an exceptionally strong engine. From a standstill, it is already above a 0.9 thrust to weight ratio, and it actually has a peak of above 1 to 1 at higher speeds. This is something you might expect out of a, you know, say for example, 10.0 or 10.3 plane. Remember, this is all the way down at 9.0. This thing's normal matchup is stuff like the MiG-17 and Sabre. And I mean, you can fight 8.0s like the LA-15 or the IL-28. It also has remarkably steady thrust, and even though it may not seem like it looking at this graph, that's because, well, this thing goes all the way up to 3,000 kilometers an hour. If I go ahead and shrink the graph down to a more typical 1,400, which you're not going to be really hitting in a normal match anyways, especially because the plane redlines below 1,300 kilometers an hour, but regardless, whenever I shrink the graph to 1,400, well, all of a sudden that thrust to weight line is looking a lot, lot more flat, and you have very steady thrust through basically all regimes of normal flight. This gives yourself a lot more leeway when it comes to getting slow, throwing yourself into dogfights, and actually committing. You know, with a lot of planes this battle rating, you have to worry about the thrust you're dramatically increasing or decreasing depending on your speed. For example, in the F5C, if you get too slow, there's a very good chance you can get energy trapped by stuff like even the MiG-21s, which despite having much worse energy retention than you, you know, their thrust at lower speeds is much better. Here's the F5C's thrust chart, you know, as a comparison, you can see it gets much, much lower in terms of thrust at those lower speeds. Other planes, it may drop off at those higher speeds, which means that as you get faster, your acceleration drops off. The F4D is not going to have that issue. Now, I did mention that the MiG-21 has a delta wing, and the F4D also does as well, and that is his one small weakness. As it is a delta wing, it has pretty poor energy retention, so as you're pulling, you'll see just like what I'm doing right here. Even with that fairly strong engine, you are going to be bleeding a ton of speed. You bleed so much speed, in fact, that I have never felt the need to pop my air brakes out, unlike the Sabre right here, because all I have to do is just pull and I will lose the speed I need to get someone to overshoot. However, unlike other planes that are Delta Wings, this at least does have good thrust and can get that speed back relatively quickly. The F4D does behave kind of like the old Kefir, if you played the Kefir before the flat model rework, where at these higher speeds, it does actually like maintaining energy, 
because it doesn't really like to pull. You're sitting there pulling eight, maybe nine Gs if you can. And at higher speeds, I can actually sit there holding down the elevator and gain speed in a flat turn sometimes. Just because the thing is not actually really pulling. Once you get lower in speed, the nose will come around very hard and you can use this to your advantage. I just recommend to be a little bit careful because as I said earlier, you will lose speed very quickly. And if you're not careful, even with a decent low speed turning this thing has, if you're caught slow, you're just going to die. That actually happened a couple times to me in the making of this video because I got a little bit too overconfident and I got smoked at the top of a turn. As for the kit, you are in a pretty good spot for the battle rating. At 9.0, having 420 mils, in this case Colts, and 4 AM9Bs is a totally acceptable loadout, and honestly, better than most of the stuff that you'll be fighting. Because remember, 9.0 has a very favorable matchmaker, so a lot of the time you're going to be sitting in these 8.3, 9.3 games, like you saw in my first game, or even 8.0, 9.0, like the one I'm in right now. The AM9B, while it's only 11 Gs, not 10, the stat card lies, and having a pretty weak motor is totally capable of killing a lot of these players, either because they either don't know how to dodge it, they get very slow, or they're in stuff like the IL-28, which, while it can dodge it, is very often unable to, either because of the fact that it spawns relatively high as a bomber, and also just because it's not the most agile vehicle. So even though it can dodge A9Bs, a lot of the time, you just can't do it in time. The guns are pretty good for the battle rating. I do have a couple gripes with them. The first is that the ammo capacity is very low. Uh, you have to be very careful when it comes to your trigger discipline. And yes, I know some of y'all are about to tell me that you can split the guns. I have tried that. Personally, after a few games, I went right back to using all of my guns together. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The biggest thing is the fact that, well, uh, you don't have nose mounted guns in this. And so as wing mounted guns do have convergence, Having all four of them firing together gives me more of a chance to actually hit. I just would rather be a little bit more careful when I have to shoot and get a reliable hit than maybe hope to get lucky with the two gun. The other thing is the fact that Colts don't actually have the best of damage. Uh, I get a lot of hits and sparks with this compared to, you know, say for example, the Vulcan. So having more shells impacting whenever I do get that shot off makes a world of a difference. Now, if you decide that it's worth it in your opinion to go ahead and do that, it's really simple. All you have to do is bind your large and small caliber guns on different keys. Those are going to trigger different sets of cannons in this case, even though they are the same caliber. My one gripe with playing the F4D right now isn't even the fault of the F4D. It's simply the fact that, well, the F104 is at 9.3, and so you have to face them very, very often because you do get those 8.3, 9.3 games all the time. And even though you are fast for a 9.0, you're still nowhere near as fast as the F-104. You do at least get four M9Bs, which are going to give you an easier time killing the F-104s and some of the other aircraft this battle rating, but uh, yeah, it's just not fun having to chase on something that's much, much, much faster than you. And the F-104 thing goes for pretty much every other vehicle at this battle rating. We just have to hope that the F-104 is going to go up at some point. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, go ahead and hit that like button. It means a lot to me. And feel free to subscribe if you aren't already. I'll catch you all next time. And my next video should be something big. So look forward to it. Have a great day and uh, peace, y'all.